Hey everybody, Mr. Piano Tech here, and today I'm going to show you how to regulate an upright action. Today I'm going to show you how to regulate an upright piano. First I'm going to show you the tools you'll commonly need to perform the adjustments. Then I'll guide you through the steps that I use, 10 in total, to regulate the piano action, as well as go over a couple other things that I didn't need mentioning. So let's head on to the shop and get started. Okay, so we're out here in the shop and let's take a look at some of the tools you're going to need to regulate the action. Uh, so here, uh, this is basic uh, metric uh, measuring tool. It's used for, for a few different measurements uh, that we're going to use during the uh, regulation. And uh, this is just a metric uh, ruler. And then we have a combination handle with a flange screwdriver in it right now. Uh, we have a tool that's used to adjust the regula regulation button. And that fits in the combination handle as well. Um, and so does this guy. So this is a, for adjusting uh, the damper spoons. And this is a little spring that's used to get the uh, jack out of your way if you're trying to uh, adjust the hammer, get to that screw that's at the bottom of the hammer flange. And then you have your spring tool, a um, little pin tool here for adjusting a few different things uh, for capstans, uh, let off, it just depends on the action. And then we have some tweezers for getting in and out um, our paper punchings. And uh, this tool here is uh, used uh, for the capstan to adjust that screw. And we have a key dip block. I modified mine to be exactly 10 millimeters. And then we have a wire bending tool. Um, it has a uh, a little angle on it uh, so you can bend a uh, wire in any direction you need to. And then we have um, a heat gun for twisting shanks and we have a, a straight piece of aluminum for checking the height and level of white keys. We have some punchings, um, various sizes. Uh, the little guys here are used for um, the center pins and uh, the bigger guys are used to uh, this, this front pin here uh, where you adjust the dip. So let's go ahead and uh, dig into it. Okay, so now we have our action model set up. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you go through the piano, go through every key, uh, check for any noises, for any damage. Um, like things like if you have a click, which this, this is fairly common when you let off of the key, if you hear a click, it's because this jack, um, when it flips back, it's not hitting felt, that little piece of felt fell off. Um, so you're just hitting wood on wood. Uh, things like that. Um, look for any uh, broken hammer shanks, uh, broken loose damper heads. Uh, any uh, broken or missing strings, any debris in the action, that sort of thing. So usually what I do before I start a regulation, I'll go through and I'll clean everything, just vacuum it out, uh, make sure everything looks like there's nothing obstructing anything that needs to be moving. Okay, so let's uh, start with the first step. So step number one would be uh, hammer to string alignment. So typically what that means is um, if you to take this hammer, and let's assume that this piece of wood right here is, is actually the string. So you wanna make sure that it lines up um, this way and that way, and it's not just hitting like two of the three strings, anything like that. Um, and if it is, uh, you're good. If it's not, um, I'll show you what you do, is you're just going to want to grab your flange screwdriver, and uh, you'll use this, get right past that jack. You're going to want to loosen that screw, hold it flat up against the uh, string, and then once it's set where it needs to be, go ahead and tighten it down. Now sometimes a hammer will turn this way or that way, and that's what we use the, uh, the heat gun for. So basically what you'll do is you'll come up here, um, apply a little bit of heat, and I, I always just go ahead and start, like let's say it's, it's turned to the right, I'll twist it a little bit to the left, apply some heat to it, make sure you're using low heat. And it, after you do that for about five or 10 seconds, you'll feel it kind of turn in your fingers and then let it go. And then it should be set right where you want it to be set. Okay, so let's go on to the next step. Step number two is going to be key height and level. Now, something that you want to look out for, of course, if you look and see how high these balance pins are sticking out, um, that's a pretty good indicator right there. These keys are way too low on this model. Uh, but what you want to do is you don't want these so high where that pin is buried in that center pin bushing. 
So typically the measurement, uh, or at least a good starting point for, uh, for key height is 64, 65 millimeters thereabouts, especially on a grand piano. So where you're gonna measure that is you're gonna go down to the key bed where the, 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 the frame of the action actually sits on, and you're gonna measure to the underside of this key cap here. So this is sitting much lower. This, actually the top of that tape's right about 65 millimeter. So we're gonna need to be, be able to bring these up to right around there, so, which looks better. Of course, this is an action model, it's not an action, so there are gonna be some discrepancies here, but um, so that's, that's what you wanna get this up to. <clears throat> and then to do that, um, you'll use your tweezers. And what you wanna do is lift up the key and you'll use your tweezers to get in here and make sure that this piece of felt is always on top of your punchings. So you're gonna lift, lift this up and out. Uh, on an upright, it's easy enough just to go ahead and pull the key out. And get that key pulled out here. All right, and so then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lift this up and then we're gonna use some of our punchings. So if I need to make a big adjustment, I'll usually start with some of the thicker cardboard ones. But basically what you do is you're gonna, you're gonna put on your punchings and once your punchings are on, put the felt back on top of it because if you don't put the felt on top, what'll happen is that key movement back and forth over time will just completely annihilate and destroy the, the paper punchings. So you put this on top and you put your key back in um, and just keep making that adjustment until that key height is right where you want it to be. Okay. Okay, so now we have the keys up to the proper height. I saved you the agony of having to watch me put in each punching. It's pretty straightforward. Again, like I said, just lift it up, lift the uh, key up, lift the uh, little piece of felt up, put in the proper amount of punchings um, until you're right around 64, 65 millimeter. Um, <clears throat> that's, it, it is variable a little bit, so um, you can play with that a little bit, but that's a good starting point. <clears throat> so again, measure straight across. It's, these are right at 64. So the height, uh, that, that's for the height of the white keys. Now, I do use, like I said, this piece of metal. Um, it's a quick and easy way of, of spanning many keys at the same time instead of getting at eye level, looking all the way across constantly, trying to get them all just right. If you tap this, you'll be able to, if you lay this across the top of the keys, you'll be able to see light underneath the ones that are a little low and the ones that are a little high, you'll see the hammer blink a little bit. Just a kind of a quicker, easier way of doing that. So the height of the black keys, <clears throat> what you want is the front of this black key, you want uh, just about 12 millimeters um, off the top of the white keys, and this one is right at 12 millimeters. So it's about where you want that. So that's good. So again, that ends uh, uh, step two for key height and level. Okay, so step number three is going to be key dip. So that's basically just how far down this front of the key dips down when you press it. So um, the gauge that I make is 10 millimeter. That's a really good starting point. Um, you can play with this a little bit. In the end, what you're looking for is to have really good aftertouch um, with everything working properly. So the, the hammer to string distance you can play with and the dip you can play with to, uh, to get that feel. We'll go over that when we get to aftertouch. So basically what I'll do is just take this gauge, um, I'll press it down, medium pressure. Don't press it super hard. Don't just barely press it lightly. So kind of a medium and just rub your finger across the top. Uh, this one feels like it has a really good dip. That's pretty level with that one. Uh, if we go over to this one, that's a little low. So I'll go ahead and uh, do the same thing. I'll pull this key up, take the uh, felt off, add a little punching to get that just at the right spot and then we'll be all set. As for the black key, uh, if it dips so far down that you're buried in between the white keys, that's too far and you also don't want it to be like way up here when you're done pressing the key. So that's, that's pretty good right there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and make that uh, key dip adjustment on that one and then we'll move along to the next step. Okay, so I'm happy with that. That's pretty straight across. Okay, so number four um, is gonna be hammer distance. Um, so <clears throat> that's just simply the distance between the, uh, the front of the hammer and the strings. And of course, like I said, this wood is gonna be, we're gonna pretend that's our string. So usually what I, th the measurements I play with are 42 to 46 millimeter. Um, so this gauge that I told you about, uh, this is actually set at 46 millimeter. So if you push that against the strings and this, this side of this piece of metal here is where the, the hammer should be, that would be 46 millimeters. So if we were to bring this a little bit closer, that's where 46 millimeters would be. Again, between this and dip, you can kind of play with it a little bit. But the way that you're, you're gonna adjust this is this guy right here. In an actual action, it will rotate up. So you're gonna see some felt, pieces of felt underneath the, these at the, at the ends and probably even in the middle. So you're gonna lift this up to where you get that 
um, hammer to string distance, put some felt under there so that when these rest and these do rest against this rail here, that it's right where you want it to be. So I would start at 46. Uh, if we need to make adjustments later for aftertouch, um, if you need more aftertouch, you're gonna wanna move them closer. So I like to start a little farther away anyway. So uh, once that's set, uh, you're gonna need to take up your lost motion. So basically what that means is if you push all these hammers, let's say, um, let's say you move them up here, and what that does is that's gonna create a little bit of a gap here between the jack and the hammer butt. So you're gonna have this. So this is lost motion and you don't want any more than maybe a millimeter of lost motion in an action. So what you'll do um, to adjust that is once you get those where you need them to be, you're gonna use your uh, little wrench for adjusting the capstan. Now in some actions, uh, these capstan screws actually have holes in them and you can just use this tool um, to simply unscrew it, which will raise it up. Uh, this one um, actually needs to have like a slotted wrench like this. This one's a little loose, but it, it'll work for our demonstration purposes. Um, they do make a few different tools and different shapes and sizes that do this job. So you wanna have a few different ones on you, but um, for the most part, it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, you're just gonna uh, unscrew this. You're gonna take up this lost motion and uh, until, it's, until it's good and snug, and you have like, I said, like maybe a millimeter of movement before that hammer actually moves, all right? Okay, so step five is going to be let off. This is a pretty crucial adjustment. Um, this will, if somebody says that their action play is really heavy, uh, it's usually because the let off is, is pretty far off. So on this tool again, uh, this right here is two millimeters thickness. So two millimeters is what I'd recommend uh, you set your, your let off to. So again, uh, pretending this is the string and you can see, as we move this forward, we're pretty, pretty far away from it. Okay, so to adjust that, we're gonna adjust the regulating regulation button here. Let me swap out my, uh, my combination handle tool. And we're gonna use the one that has a little, this little oblong slot in it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on there like that, and we're gonna unscrew it so we can raise it up because we want it to be closer to the strings when it actually uh, lets off. So that's getting closer. Usually working like quarter turns. It doesn't take much usually. That's pretty close. Let's see where our gauge shows we are. I'd say that's right. Yep, okay, so that's right at two millimeters. So of course, the, again, the idea is that it'll continue on its own inertia to actually hit the string, but you don't want it to hold itself up against the string. So get that a couple millimeters away. Um, that'll be pretty good. Uh, one thing I want to point out that you may run into a lot in actions, I know that I do. So you may have bouncing hammers, so when you, when you strike the key, it, it hits a few times like that. That's typically because there's too much lost motion. So the last step of taking up that lost motion in the key will almost always eliminate that. Sometimes you may need to make it some adjustment to uh, the let off and to the dip to get that to go away. But just, uh, just some, you can see it kind of doing a little bit there because we do have a little bit of of motion here but anyway just just as something to think about uh, you may just it may just be a matter of pulling up the uh, lost motion just a little bit so the uh, let off like I said I set it two millimeters uh, I believe uh, usually uh, the play allowance of this is maybe like one and a half to four and a half millimeters something like that um, so a couple millimeters is usually pretty good it just depends on the piano action how it was designed and built and the condition of it Okay, so step number six is going to be back check. So that's, of course, after a, I say medium, medium strike, how far away that hammer is, which that's way too close. Um, when it actually completes what it's supposed to do and it lands on that back check here, how far away that is. So these gauges, this gauge here would be your, um, would be your back check ad adjustment. You can see we're, we're quite a few millimeters off there. Um, and these are typically right around uh, 15, 16 millimeters. Uh, that's where you want it to land. Uh, so plus or minus about three millimeters or so. So simply to adjust that, uh, you can just you know, pull it back if you're careful to grab this whip in and do it like this at the same time. Or even the, uh, if you can get to it, uh, these pliers work really well as, as well. Um, you can also use some needle nose pliers, but just, matter, just remember however you bend this, make sure you do it as low as possible. Um, you don't want to do it too high because you could uh, end up breaking the whip in. So we need that further back. So I'm just going to simply do it this way. Okay. 
So when that's done checking, medium strike, that puts us just about there. You're gonna get some variances. So when you're, when you're tested on this, um, the examiners will strike at a few different um, um, strengths just to kind of get an average of how far back it is. That's probably a little too far back there, but it's pretty close. So we'll just leave it there for demonstration purposes. Okay, so number seven is going to be aftertouch. So this is really important. Um, so technically, uh, what aftertouch is, is you're going to have, you want to have some motion in the key after you're done with, after everything's done what it's going to do. So once you do this, you still want to be able to have some wiggle room here. And you'll see this jack uh, backing away from the hammer butt there. Okay, so uh, with improper aftertouch of an upright, um, that jack is going to be just clear. By the time everything's done, it's going to be just clear of that hammer butt. Uh, but you don't want it any more than like maybe four or five millimeters. I think four and a half millimeters is, is technically correct. Um, so again, that's going to be a medium blow. So after medium blow, um, you want it to just clear that so you have, you know, so you can still do that, so you have some extra movement. So if you don't have enough, if, you, if you're getting complete and it's like right here and you're having to push really hard for it to complete what it's doing, two different things you can do. I would first start with um, moving the hammer distance. So move the hammers a little bit closer to the, to the string. So what that's gonna do, so if, if you're starting up here and you're moving the same amount as if you're starting back here, it's gonna allow a little bit more movement through the action. So if you're starting, instead of starting here, you're starting there, you're gonna have that much more play after you press the key down. You're gonna have that much more to play with. So you might wanna move this forward a couple millimeters. And if you need to, you can even uh, just lower the dip um, a millimeter or two. Between those two, you should be able to get the aftertouch just right. So just remember, for aftertouch, um, that jack should just be just be clear, but no, it shouldn't be like way out here. That's way too much. Then you may need to change things the other direction. But uh, basically, if this isn't enough, um, adjust your, your hammer distance or your dip to get it right where you need it to be. Okay, so step number eight is going to be dampers. So with dampers, you want the damper head to move uh, roughly around one third to one half of the striking distance. So if you look at when this hammer, between here and here, when it's at that halfway point, that's right where that damper starts to lift off the string. So that's actually regulated, I'd say, pretty close. It's maybe a, a little late. So I'd probably do it right around here instead, but it, that's really close. Um, so all you need to do to adjust that, um, you can use this tool here. And what this will actually do is it'll get behind like this. And so if you need it to move sooner, adjust it this way so that damper spoon moves closer to the dampers. That'll make it pick up a little quicker. And if you need it the other way, just bend it the other direction. Um, these can be a little tricky to use. You really gotta get the hang of these. If you're having trouble, um, just mark the ones you need to make adjustments to, pull the action out, um, get a little tool in there, and just uh, twist them um, as you can look at them. Sometimes that's a lot easier depending on what type of actions, especially drop actions, things like that. Um, full size uh, upright actions, a little bit easier to, to mess around with. But so that's basically what you want. So you want it uh, right around one third to halfway to the strings. You want that hammer um, movement right around a half to one third. You want that damper to start picking up off the strings. So, okay. And of course, make sure that the dampers are aligned to the strings as well. Okay, so pedals. Um, we don't have pedals on this model, um, but it's pretty straightforward. You don't want any more than about maybe three to six millimeters of, of play uh, or lost motion in the pedal before it, it kicks, especially with sustain, before it kicks this lever that lifts all of the dampers up at the same time. So, you know, you want to be able to move the pedal just a little bit to take up some of that lost motion, then for it to move. Um, now, the left pedal, the soft pedal, um, a good way to check that, again, I'd say maybe three millimeters max uh, play on that. But if you, can, if you press that, which is going to lift this up, and if it's, if it's making some of the hammers do what's called blinking, it's actually yanking on this bridle strap, um, and it's pulling it up. So then that bridle strap is too tight. So again, you can just use a tool, bend that how you need to. Uh, sometimes you'll hear a clicking noise in the piano, and a lot of times it's this uh, bridle strap holder that's moved over and it's, and it's hitting the uh, back check um, metal on, on the side of the, the, of the note next to it. So just watch out for that. Uh, that's a common place to hear, to hear noise in the action. And um, step number 10, uh, just check for smooth operation of everything. 
Uh, so make sure there's no squeaking, uh, no other clicks, no noises, anything like that. If you need to lubricate things, I use the uh, CLP lube. Um, it's safe to use on every, everything in the piano. Um, so a couple more things. I just want to make note. Of, I don't normally end up having to adjust these uh, jack springs, but if you do, that's what you use this little tool for. So if you need a little bit more power, you can pull this out and just stretch it a little bit and then just make sure it goes back into the little hole um, that's underneath there. So that works properly. Um, also with these, sometimes um, if they're broken, they do make little replacements you can put on there. Uh, but if it's not enough pressure helping this return, just let it loose, pull, pull a little bit, just to stretch it out a little bit, make sure it goes back in that groove. Um, and, that, and that's about it. I just want to note, if you do need to pull a hammer out, um, they do make little spring tools like this if you need to, that will fit in here to get that jack out of your way so you can easily get in there with a screwdriver to take that screw out. Um, so it causes a lot less interference to use it that way. For me, it just depends on the action, um, the condition of it, how it's designed, if I need to do that or not. So step one is going to be hammer to string alignment, um, which is, of course, pulling, pushing this against the string. Make sure it's aligned properly and it's not twisted in any sort of way. And you're going to have your key height and level, so 64, 65 millimeters, a good starting point. But you may just need to kind of play with it a little bit, depending on how the action was built. Check that they're all level. Um, black key, about 12 millimeters up from um, the white keys at the front of it. Uh, then your dip, uh, again, about 10 millimeters, it's, it's what I use. Um, you may need to adjust that a little bit if you need to adjust for aftertouch. Same thing with hammer distance, 42 to 46 millimeters. So if you need to adjust that for aftertouch, do that as well. But that's a good starting point. Um, then you have your let off, um, which is, if you remember, it's two millimeters right there. And then you're going to have uh, step six, which is uh, your back check. So use that um, bigger part of the gauge there, but roughly 16 millimeters or so, plus or minus about maybe three millimeters. Um, number seven, uh, your aftertouch. Make sure everything's working well. You're not being, it's not binding up anywhere. You have full motion throughout the key and you have a little bit of play there uh, between the jack and the hammer butt. Um, that, should be, that should be good. Uh, step eight, your dampers. Make sure they're rising all together. Nothing's bent um, out of place. Make sure they're aligned properly to the strings and they're not you know, twisted. Um, there's a little screw back there. You can make adjustments if it's a little too high or if it's sunk a little low over the years or if it's not quite squared up to the string, you can make that adjustment there. And they do have a little spring back here. You can use that spring tool if you need to tighten that up a little bit as well. Number nine would be the pedals. Um, again, no more than about three to six millimeters of lost motion. Make sure everything's lubricated. You can use a CLP lube uh, for all that as well to get rid of a lot of squeaking. And number 10, just make sure this smooth operation. Make sure everything is um, playing properly. Uh, and make sure everything just feels good to play. Nothing's binding. It's not really shallow dip. You have good aftertouch. Um, some of it you just kind of have to play around with. Uh, but um, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and finish up the video. So that's it. These are the steps and techniques that I use to regulate an upright piano action. Now, of course, many manufacturers build their actions slightly differently. This should, however, give you a good base and solid place to start with, although you may need to make a few adjustments here and there depending on what you run into out in the field. Also, I've listed the steps below in the video description for easy reference. So thanks for watching. Any questions, comments, snide remarks, leave them below, and as always, stay tuned.